approach that we take, which is quite different. Um, so Unicraft is what we would call an SDK that allows someone to create their own unikernels that are highly customized for their application, right? And of course, we're talking about a single application, which is not useful maybe for uh, your desktop or your phone, but is very, very useful for um, cloud native environments where you normally run, let's say, your web server in an instance or your database in an instance and so on, but also um, very useful for embedded and I IoT or for a virtualization where you even want to isolate your components into separate unikernels, right? So you can imagine, for example, um, if anyone here is familiar with, let's say, the Zen hypervisor where you have the DOM zero and there you have all your support functionality into one big um, Linux-based um, system, um, security-wise, this is not great because if someone compromises one of them, any of them, then they compromise everything. So with unikernels, you can actually break down this DOM zero into individual unikernels, and then you seal each one of them in a separate um, instance that um, in the event of compromise, the, the, it, it kind of also seals the attacker, right? So the attacker cannot laterally move across the system. Um, anyway, so, um, so yes, uh, Unicraft is an open source project. Um, it is, um, so we have also our startup, Unicraft.io, which is, um, um, who is actually behind also the open source project. Um, we are pretty new. Uh, we, uh, the, the, the startup was uh, founded in October in Heidelberg, Germany. Um, so we are still pretty small. And we are targeting um, both uh, cloud providers and also um, companies that use cloud so that you can reduce your cost in either case. Um, we are a member of the Linux Foundation, the Zen Project, and also uh, we have uh, in the open source project participation from several um, universities, but also uh, from the industry. Um, moreover, um, there has been also some substantial um, research uh, behind Unicraft, uh, which uh, you can see here. This is also available in uh, our website. Um, so let's, let's start um, with um, the Unicraft's approach on how to create unikernels. Um, so normally, let's say when you create an application, traditionally you have your application um, along with some libraries, right, and then the operating system, and each one of them has its own components. But in practice, actually, you only use a few of them, right? And this is exactly what we do uh, with Unicraft. We take only the ones that are actually used, and we pack them together into a single unikernel. So our approach is, let's say, more additive rather than subtractive. And I will explain in a minute how we do that. Um, so our design principles are full modularity, uh, unmodified applications, and seamless integration. And these are all very important. Uh, full modularity we'll discuss right away. Um, it is um, strongly related to what I just showed you. Um, unmodified applications is very important because you want people to be able to switch to Unicraft with no effort. And seamless integration, again, for the same reasons, right? You want people to be able to still use the tools that they have been always um, used to and so on. Um, so let's see how we achieve modularity. Our philosophy is that everything is a library. So we break down the whole system into a set of what we call micro libraries. And the user can then select which ones are required for their application and compile them together into a unikernel. You can see here um, an example. So from top to bottom, from the, on, at the top is the application, right? You can think of, I don't know, Nginx or something like that. And then you can have a standard library, which in our case, um, we can say maybe muscle. Then um, you have the syscalls, which of course need to be POSIX compliant so that the application can work unmodified. 
And from there on, you have what we call the OS primitives later, layer, which can be um, libraries for allocators, network stacks, block devices, anything you can imagine. And of course, at the bottom, then you have the platform layer where you can support individual platforms, whether it's KVM or Zen, um, Firecracker or uh, whatnot, right? Um, so through this uh, approach with micro libraries, it's then um, relatively easy for someone to just pick the libraries that are required for the application and then um, have the Unicraft SDK to build this unikernel together with the application. Um, of course, we uh, support different architectures. So we support um, Intel and ARM. And also, RISC-V is uh, on the way. Currently, it's um, under uh, code review. But uh, it's on the roadmap for this year. Um, so except from, um, of course, um, let's say, compiled um, languages. So Unicraft is written in C. Um, you can write libraries in C++ also. We also support runtimes, which means that also you can take your existing application um, written in Python or Ruby or Go, JavaScript, whatever, right? And then you can run it on top of Unicraft again and modify it. Sorry. Um, so going back to the um, benefits of unikernels, um, let's see how actually well uh, Unicraft does in each one of them. So let's start with the image size. So um, when it comes to image size, um, you can see here that um, uh, Unicraft uh, being compiled for different applications like Nginx, uh, Redis, SQLite, and so on, but also for a simple hello world. And you can see that actually it gets pretty small, right? You can see that um, the whole image with the kernel and the application gets as small as one point something megabyte, less than two megabyte, which is pretty small, right? Um, even with additional optimizations like link time optimization and dead code elimination, it can get even smaller. So I would say that when it comes to image size, we have pretty small images. Um, so when it comes to boot times, um, you can see here Unicraft uh, booting uh, on top of different VMMs. We support QMU and uh, Firecracker and so on. And you can see some pretty small um, boot times. Um, in fact, on Firecracker, we even achieve uh, three milliseconds. Um, and that is, for example, for something like SQLite. Um, for most of them, if you notice on the graph, um, the purple part is the time that the VMM takes, and then the yellow part is the time that Unicraft takes. And for most of them, except from Firecracker, you will see that um, the VMM takes most of the time, but Unicraft itself boots really, really fast. Um, Firecracker, of course, is very minimal, which then take less time to um, bring up Unicraft, which is how it should be, and then mo more time is taken by Unicraft. But in any case, still, this is like very, very small. Um, I don't think you can make a Linux boot in three milliseconds. Um, so with that, I would say that we have very, very fast boot times. And we think, actually, we can go faster. Um, when it comes to memory footprint, um, you can see here a comparison. Uh, of different applications between Unicraft and um, other systems. And again, we have um, the smallest memory footprint. So you might require just a few megabytes um, altogether, right? Which means then you can uh, deploy many, many, many instances. Um, also, uh, you can see that, for example, uh, compared to Linux, which is on the other extreme, we have something like uh, like uh, five times reduction for um, Nginx and, and Redis, right? And even that Linux is already very, very much optimized. Um, when it comes to performance, 
um, you can now see, uh, again, a comparison of uh, Unicraft uh, with Nginx um, compared to other systems. Um, this is uh, the throughput, the number of requests per second that we can handle. And you can see, again, we do the best, right? Um, which is 80%, uh, 82% better than uh, Docker and uh, three times faster than Linux on KVM. So I would say, again, Unicraft does really, really fast. And of course, when it comes to um, reduce attack surface and security, um, so unikernels by their nature are um, more secure because uh, being so minimal, you have less lines of code, which means also that you have um, less possibility um, for uh, vulnerabilities, um, smaller attack surface, and so on. Also, there is no uh, redundant services, so no SSH, no systemd, no other services that are not required, which again minimize um, the risk uh, for attacks. Uh, moreover, um, we also support, or we're aiming to support uh, all modern security features and compete with um, uh, already established uh, operating systems when it comes to security. So you can see here um, what is the current state of um, different mitigations, right? So uh, WXRX, uh, UBSAN, um, all the modern hardware-assisted um, mitigations uh, for ARM. Um, you can write libraries in Rust. Um, then you have uh, others that are currently in progress. So Kassan is under review right now. Um, ASLR is work in progress. Uh, we have um, uh, hardware-assisted um, uh, hardware randomness uh, already upstream, and some others are uh, on the way. So um, let's see how um, one can uh, transition from an application from Linux to Unicraft. Um, actually, you have mainly two ways. Uh, one is a native way where it's through compilation. And this means that you take the sources of your application and you, you compile it together with Unicraft. And that requires, of course, um, a little bit of um, work that you port the applications um, compile part, comp uh, compile system into Unicraft. So normally you create an intermediate glue library that allows um, Unicraft to compile that external application, but you do not need to modify the application sources. Um, on the other hand, you have the um, binary um, compatibility way where actually you take um, already pre-compiled binaries and um, these can either be, let's say, um, uh, pre-compiled objects that uh, are statically linked to Unicraft, or they can be um, pre-compiled dynamic objects that are loaded by Unicraft on runtime. And um, of course, each one of these ways has its own requirements, right? So for example, the, the native way um, requires some API compatibility, right? Which means POSIX, of course. Um, uh, Unicraft, of course, um, supports POSIX or aims to support um, as much as possible from POSIX. Um, and then, of course, the rest requires on your libraries. So as long as you have um, the required libraries, then you can compile your application with Unicraft. And that means that, um, first of all, you need a standard library. We support Muscle, which is a um, a, li a, a C library that is commonly used um, in several Linux flavors. And we support also a variety of other libraries that are um, commonly used for applications. Of course, it's also very easy to, let's say, port other libraries to Unicraft. The, um, this is done the same way like in applications, so you don't touch the library code. You just need to do a little bit of porting on the uh, build system part. Um, then on the um, binary compatibility side, um, when you import uh, other binaries, of course, you need ABI compatibility, which means ELF. Of course, 
um, uh, Unicraft, uh, Unicraft is um, able to um, understand ELF. Um, and then you need, um, let's say, um, other, uh, other inter uh, binary compatibility, like syscalls. We have uh, our own syscall shim, where it, uh, let's say, pretends that it does syscalls, but it actually, um, since Unicraft runs on uh, all in kernel space, it actually forwards this uh, request to the uh, implementing library. Um, and then you have, of course, all the rest uh, that are um, runtime dependent um, features that, let's say, Linux specific things like procfs, csfs, mounts, file systems, and so on. Again, we, we, we support all that. So in practice, you can even take um, an existing ELF. You can take whatever libraries it requires. You put them into a um, uh, uh, virtual file system, and then Unicraft will have a very small loader that will load all these and then start running. And this is um, a very easy way to, to take an existing application and run it on Unicraft. Of course, if you take the compilation path, you can start micro-optimizing, right? So you can do additional optimizations, blah, blah, and you might achieve a little bit better performance, but in any case, even the binary compatibility way um, performs pretty well. Um, we already support, of course, some commonly used applications out of the box. So Nginx, SQLite, Redis, uh, DPDK, and so on are already supported. Um, so um, we work uh, on GitHub. Um, all development takes place there. Um, we have a fairly large community, and uh, I would say we have a healthy growth. Uh, we hit the 1,000 stars milestone this year, and now we are approaching uh, 1.5k stars already. Um, the community in general is also growing. Um, development is divided mostly into interest groups. Um, so you ha we have uh, so far 87 teams from what I see here. Um, and depending on um, the topic, people join different industry groups and so on. Um, all communication uh, happens on Discord. Again, the community grows there um, pretty fast. Uh, more and more people join us. Um, we also have, um, we have run some hackathons and we still do, so we had uh, some all over Europe. We had in Aachen, we had in Athens, Amsterdam, uh, Lyon, Munich, and Porto, and there are more hackathons on the way. These are normally um, two-day sessions where people get together. The first day, um, we mostly talk about Unicraft and get people familiar on how things work on the technical level, and then the second day, um, people do some hands-on uh, work on different um, tasks. Um, and also, we uh, participate uh, in the Google Summer of Code. So um, last year, we participated with three projects. Um, this year, we participated with uh, five projects. Uh, in general, um, we had some um, much more interest this year than last year when it comes to uh, students uh, and applicants. Uh, so again, uh, we have now, let's say, almost twice as many. So again, things uh, seem to grow also uh, on that front as well. Um, finally, we have also um, our own Summer of Code. So this happened uh, last year and the year before already. Um, this one is a uh, uh, five days um, uh, online event that is also um, free to participate, of course. Um, and this year is on, uh, starts on the 4th of uh, July. So if anyone is interested, please uh, feel free to join. Um, so future work. Um, we are working hard towards... Um, reaching the 1.0 release, and we are aiming to do that uh, in the beginning of 2024. Um, people are working into um, also providing more pre-compiled binaries, so we have a repository that now is a collection of uh, these pre-compiled binaries that 
people can um, use and deploy out of the box. Um, then, of course, other people are working on bringing more libraries, support for more platforms, um, architectures, and so on. And, of course, um, there is also a track for um, embedded and IoT, which, again, Unicraft uh, is a good fit for these areas. So that was it. Um, please join us if you have interest into this area. Um, we have, uh, you can find here links for um, the main website of Unicraft, our GitHub. Uh, of course, Discord is the right place to come and say hello and uh, introduce yourself. Um, and of course, you can yeah, follow us on social media. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any question to ask? Hello, hello. Um, I have uh, two questions. Uh, uh, one for uh, I. Uh, I want to know about uh, 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 the maintenance about this project, because you know um, uh, this should be a a uh, uh, packaging of or or a, or a toolkit to repack the kernel, but however, uh, I I want to know what about uh, the schedule or the, your roadmap to support any uh, uh, latest or future version of the Linux kernel. This is the fir uh, first question, and the second question is: um, I saw that uh, I I, I <coughs> heard that you said um, you have no uh, system D or any type of scheduler running on top of the kernel, and that uh, I think the philosophy underneath is um, you you are running a single application or a single surface in each of this image, and then. Uh, there comes uh, this one, one question come up uh, to me t in, into my mind is uh, how is how is that compared to uh, say things like Docker because they are, you, we're using it's the same kernel but you are taking the different approach to running another kernel. Uh, I want to, do you have any um, can you explain about the advantage of this thing? Thank you. Um, actually. Um you might repeat the first question, but I will answer to the second one. So actually, if you need um, a scheduler, um, we actually do support scheduling. Um, we don't have systemd or any uh, unnecessary services, but uh, of course, uh, if your application needs a scheduler, we support scheduling, and also we support uh, multi-threading, um, and so on. Would you like to repeat the first question, maybe, or? Uh, maybe I, I just used it the wrong word. I'm, I'm not meaning scheduler, but a, 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 a uh, things like supervisor D or system D, uh, not a scheduler, but a uh, a a a one on the in, in the rec in the back one. And the second, the first question is, uh, what is a roadmap to support the future version of Linux kernel? Well, we, so the dependencies to the kernel are only when it comes to interfaces, right? So if the kernel, for example, introduces a new syscall and so on, we have to implement it. Um, or um, other dependencies like, um, I don't know, something new in ProcFS, CSFS, and all that. Um, again, this is something that we would need to implement. Okay, uh, thank you, Mihalas, for the sharing. And